look at that slide, uh, you know, it just touches a little bit on, and a lot of studies, of course, have been done about the different generations. My company, IntegriSure, actually started by saying, you know, people over 55 are not that strange, and that, uh, you know, that's where my company started. Now, in those days, 15 years ago, people would say, but, you know, people over 55, they're over the wall. Um, I said it because I was 40 at the time, you know, in any event. Uh, and uh, they would never adapt to technology. They want somebody to come and see them. And that's, you know, 10, 15 years ago. They want somebody to come and visit them at home about uh, short-term insurance. So your model is not going to work. Now, the model was very different or very um, new in, at that time because the model was, we're going to be a direct insurance broker. Now, some people said, but where is the saving then going to be? And, of course, we can have uh, a whole day talking about the misconceptions about direct being cheaper and where the money is really spent. And then you must go to the FSB and there you'll find people that don't have a clue on where money is being spent and what acquisition costs are, you know, uh, fueled by lots of politics around the whole environment. Everybody has having their own little thing. So the thing is that we built a business around that market. And we quickly found that that market became the most informed portion of the whole market. Uh, given all the other generations, I mean, a millennial that when you say, um, you must really read this business book, and they say, won't you just uh, tweet that for me? And that's all he reads, that tweet. Um, we, we would think that they are the most informed. And this is not about the generations, I'm just saying. Out of the, the recent past came a, a totally new, total informed client on all of those levels. Today, you have the so-called silver surface. They know more about the product than the salesman himself. I have a, a, quite a few friends in that market. And when a guy like that takes delivery of his new Prado or his new Mercedes, he would point out the things on that car that is not what the website in Germany said it should be. A rather difficult customer to deal with. A very informed customer. When we started as little as 10, 15 years ago, the silent generation and then the baby boomers were those that were loyal to where they did business. And today that loyalty is just not there anymore because of the whole environment that has just changed. These guys are on the web, they check everything out, and they are sometimes more informed than what you are. I recently um, visited a group and just uh, spoke to the group, and there was a, a retired guy in the group of 78, they, they pre-warned me that this guy is going to take me on in this group discussion because of bad service. That was at the time that the post office was striking, and he took a policy with us, and up his end was, and then the chairman said, we'll get to that question later because, you know, he had a big thing. And then eventually I had to face his question, and his, he, his comment was, I took a policy with you, and I don't have the schedule yet. I said, do you know that the post office will have asked me a lucky email? Uh, don't you have an email address? He said, of course I have, and he took an iPhone out. He says, the print is just too small on this bloody thing. I've got it here, but I can't read it. So the point is that he was connected, he had an email address, but he still wanted that document. And there, that day, I realized when we send a PDF file to our iPhone, no good anymore. You've got to send him something else, maybe even a video. He will look at the video. So this slide is just to say, although the traditionalists will say, let's have a conversation, it doesn't mean that that's the only way the traditionalists communicate and what he wants. So what are we mostly busy with in short-term insurance? 
And I know this is a technology thing, but these things have nothing to do with technology. If you speak to anybody, the first thing is they talk RDR to you, and the next law. And we're trying to catch up with what Jonathan Caroline and those guys are thinking. Man, and were they trained by the wrong people because they were trained by this industry. So we spend in our industry a hell of a lot of time to try and figure out what's going to happen next, to try and figure out how we're going to get around it. Not like crooks, but how we're going to deal with this. And uh, that's all we talk on the top levels. Uh, and of course, I'm not in those big companies uh, on a day-to-day -day basis to see how much time has been spent on saying, say, how are we going to make ourselves more efficient and more effective? The other thing is we talk a lot about market share. Uh, South African environment is like a war zone at the moment. Um, sometimes you can't figure how the guy can come up with a price that he comes up with. Not only direct guys, but all over the show. So it is a war zone, and it's all about market share. One of the biggest problems I believe we have in the South African environment is that the guys that are either listed or that's very big cannot report back to their boards about the risk cycle that is normal in the insurance world. So we talk a lot about market share, even trying to get the regulator to protect our market share that we've got already. So what are the volumes? Volumes in our industry creeping to 100 billion annual premium. Now, please don't divide that by any other currency, not even the puller, because it'll come out of my life. But uh, it's a big industry, and we help to keep South Africa going, because uh, there are big uh, risks there, and of course, those risks are mitigated uh, when something happens. About 106 product providers, gold, don't correct me, about 8,400 FSPs came down from originally 14,000 that was registered. Um, sometimes the FSB will say that uh, we like those guys dying off. Uh, we like uh, the offering to be less by, by, by fewer. But that is busy happening, and I think it all has to do with what is happening in the technology. Technology cannot be afforded. Now we think we automate it because we send an email. But can you now imagine having to send in a year 450,000 emails to find out if that client can now get the car that's financed. We do it like that in this industry, in South Africa. There might be arrangements between some, some insurers and banks, but I have not heard a hell of a lot of those arrangements being in place. And when you talk to the banks, they would say, man, 200, 300 million per month uninsured loss is nothing on our book. It's when the client just walks away because he, he, he lacks the, the initial thing. Because a piece of paper means nothing if you don't control in an organized way in the background. So most of the seven largest binder givers, insurers, do not have manageable data. Now, the only reason why I said it like that, because in my being involved in the stride side of this industry, I would always get somebody that will differ with me to say, no, 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 we adhere to the law. So that's why I say, do not have manageable data. Because all claim that they have the data. But in my instance, with my binder holding intermediary, I get a daily or monthly request to please just give them another kind of data. And then I find out it's somewhere sitting on a disk. Maybe that disk is not even spinning. And uh, that's how we try and run it in the South African environment. No claim records. We check it by hand in South Africa. There was a recent uh, ombud case that said, but you, the intermediary, must make sure that you check, even if the client tells you that he, that he didn't have claims, if you put them on your books, then you must go and check with the previous insurer and check with the previous and the previous. Another insurer then wrote another opinion about that, the internal ombud that said, this is definitely going to be something that every single body, a person that writes a policy is going to be found guilty of not being able to check. You've got to go and check. How do we do it? We send the email. We wait forever. We don't follow up. Now, I'm not saying that there are not systems in place. 
I'm talking about the bulk of how we do it. We manage emergency services manually. But yet when you use an Uber, you know how far the guy is from where you are. And of course the same with an assessor and a tow. We complain about the towing guys bullying us as an industry. But then if you're big enough, you can contract with those guys and say you put an Uber kind of app in your uh, tow truck. We will, t we will not talk to you over a phone. We're going to see who's the closest. We will then dispatch one. We will give the client an app to see how far you're away from him. And you can meet there in the street like we do with Uber. So these technologies, and the first that's going to do that is just going to take the market because those are the things that's really important and that really bugs clients. Individual databases with no central cover of confirmation possibilities. Yes. We constantly talk about the need for compulsory third-party liability insurance in South Africa. And then we talk it away because, you know, we say that they can't even get the toll roads to work and it's this and it's that and it's this and it's that. But one day, the government might just come, come and say, okay, now we make it compulsory like in, in the rest of the world. Even just the north of our borders, it's compulsory. And then this industry will not be ready to say, don't put it in a pool and mismanage it. This industry will then, that day, lose every portion of third-party insurance of every comprehensive policy to a government fund. Because we won't be able to say, there's the app the policeman can use. He just scans the license. And that app will, within less than a second, come back and say, this guy is insured with that insurer. The policy is paid up. He's covered. I believe the biggest challenge we've got to get new technology into is we've got to change the leadership thinking. That is quite a challenge. Because if we mostly think about regulatory issues and we mostly think about how to implement the SAM of, of the day and the RDR and comment and all of those kind of things, then we don't spend enough time on thinking about these things. And if a team is too... What does he work now? Um, intoxicated by old insurance thinking people. They're going to just think old insurance way. We're going to teach an award collaboration. And this is a huge thing, you know, outsource collaboration. It is a very tricky thing to do. It's very tricky for people and management to understand that if you outsource something, you're still responsible for it. And that you can't just shift the blame. And we have to make sure that we've got organizations that think that way because then we will be able to reap the benefits of the new technology. It's very important to build specifically design teams. In my small environment, we did it for the last couple of years and it is absolutely wonderful what it did for us in the use of the new technology in the trust that came from there in how you select the different teams to work together. So yes, bad news for the baby boomers. You're going to have to have more millennials on your team than what you think is necessary. And bad news for the millennials. You're going to need to have some baby boomers in there. You're going to put these teams together so that they can think about what the client wants and do it for the client. Technology projects are easily juggernaut. If you don't put the right team in there, and you just leave it to the, te to the techies, they're going to tell you everything can be done in a jiffy, they're going to underestimate it, well, I'm telling you things that you know, and they will easily juggernaut it. So that's a very important thing, is you've got to do what is important. You've got to make sure that you prioritize nice to have from ha to have to have. A lot of money is spent on those kind of things, but it means absolutely nothing for the client. To think that you, you do a client a favor to give him an app whereby he must go through his house and take a picture of every single thing that he's got in his house and barcode scan everything 
thing in the house of Mon. You're on a different planet. Not even my Opa Khruki would have done that. So a lot of money is spent on, you know, nice to have or what seems to, but that does not really make a difference. So you've got to make sure that you do those things that makes a difference. So many fields that are so interlinked that when I looked at, the, at, the, at, at a recent thing that we just did in my small company on how all those fields link into one another, should have seen those IT guys when we said, so is this a client-centric thing, or is this just, just about the guy's car? So other apps may think that you can let the client come in, change his address, because address changes must know where, does he, where did he move to, but insurance, uh-uh, it affects a lot of the risks. Now, how do you, the, the, so it's more complex than what you think. So don't let somebody that lives next to somebody that you know, that knows somebody that is a PC guru, tell you he's going to come and solve it for you. Management must be absolutely involved in everything. That's why you've got to have your full team in. So in insurance, we've got to move from a grudge to giving the client a reason. And there's a lots of technology new ways that we can do that. These areas are screaming for help. I touched on that before. Claims is that that's what the client really buys. And man, if you go and talk to clients, they are frustrated with how we handle that process. And with certain apps, we can just easily do it. Don't think you're going to give a guy an app to say, you must do all these things, take this photograph, do, 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 do. When in three years you might have an accident, he's not going to carry that app, he's going to delete it after six months. Client education, that's the big thing. What is in the box? Do we ever tell a client what is in the box? But yet, that same client buys things from the internet where he can click what is in the box. So we don't tell our clients that. We give them policy wording, and we prefer to send that with men with cliff thick. USB on steroids. You get so many uh, 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 U UBI, um, usage-based insurance on steroids. You get so many efforts in trying to do that. But then at the back, that sits one of the oldest versions of a Google, Google map that is not mobile-friendly. I'm talking things that you understand.